what are your thoughts ahead of, well, ahead of this bout with Anderson Silva? I know he's old, but he beat Chavez Jr. So, you know, how dangerous, how dangerous do you, do you think he could be for you? He's very dangerous. Uh, the man hasn't left the gym. He's on a KO streak. Um, and, you know, he's a super freak athlete. Um, and so can't take him lightly. He's got way more experience than me. So while that age, you know, could maybe slow him down or whatever, but he has all of the experience that I, I don't have. I've been a pro for two and a half years. Um, so I'm not underestimating him, but I do, I do think I will win. Yeah. And well, and winning, you know, where does that take you next in your boxing career? Like would winning this fight give you the sort of credibility you need or what do you need sort of afterwards? Yeah, uh, I, I, I think for sure people would have to put some respect on my name. <laughs> um, but I don't know, man, I, I'm doing this for me. And, and I've always believed in my vision this whole entire time. And I know what I'm capable of. Um, so people are really just going to be catching up to to my skill level and reality is going to hit them in the face. But for me, it's 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 been my reality the the whole entire time. Um, and after this, I think everyone is going to be calling me out. Everyone's going to be wanting to fight me. It, it sort of already is like that. I just think it is going to amplify even more. And you did a little call out in a in a in a fat suit for uh Tyson Fury. I mean, do you think there could be, I don't know, some sort of exhibition or is there something you could put together with, with Tyson? Oh man, maybe, maybe a wrestling event. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we go WWE. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely want to take out his, his little brother though. Um, in, in Tommy, I think that's still a big fight. And uh, there's unfinished business. I've wanted to get the professional boxers into the ring because that's been the number one criticism is fight a real boxer, fight a real boxer. And I've tried, um, but it, it's, you know, hasn't worked out twice now. Um, and me and my partners have lost millions of dollars because of it. So I think the professional boxers are scared to lose um, and they're scared to be embarrassed and they're scared you know, because that fear and that pressure starts to set in that they are representing the whole entire boxing community. But they know, they know if they get hit with this right hand, then they're going to be turned into the biggest meme on the internet. So they just don't want to take that risk when it comes down to it. Losing to me is probably the worst fighter to lose to in the, in the world. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Uh, we, we've got a guy on Sky Sports called Vidal Riley, who, uh, you know, proper boxer, you know, good amateur, novice pro like yourself. He trained KSI. He's built up a bit of a social media following. What do you think about, you know, coming over to the UK and, and fighting someone like Vidal? I don't know if you, you're aware of him. Of course, of course. Yeah, no, I think it would be super, super interesting. I, I actually talk about this um, on my show uh, that's dropping tomorrow. I, I talked about the possibility of fighting Vidal and I think it's super interesting especially because he's KSI's trainer and the whole narrative between KSI and I but KSI is never going to get into the ring with me Let, let's let's be honest let's stop you know being hopeful there it's just not going to happen if it's not happening now it's not going to happen in two years right I, I'm still going to be training he's still going to be making music so he's not getting any better at this sport. He's not taking it seriously. His coach is a, is, is a bum. So he, there's no way he can catch up to the level that I'm at. I'm at. So I think it'd be funny to prove to the world that I'm better at, than KSI to beat his trainer. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's a, definitely a possibility. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think we have a similar record, like you said, um, and and I think the boxing world would like laugh and be like, oh, you're gonna lose, oh, da, da. and I I just know I would win, and that's that's what would be great about the fight is like the shock factor of that. Um, I I don't know if he's a big enough draw. That's where like it sort of comes down to it. Like I would have to do all the promotion. People know him a, a, a bit because of KSI, but obviously in the U.S. he's not known. Um, but if we could figure out the business side of it and, you know, we could get media partners aligned to be interested in it, then, yeah, I think it's a big fight. Brilliant. When you spoke more generally of the boxing world, how, like, boxing is a pretty, you know, it can be a very traditional place. How do you feel the boxing world is 
is reacting to you? Is it reacting with suspicion or, you know, some elements intrigued that you're doing something new and different? I think the boxing world, uh, yeah, is, is reacting in many different ways when it comes to me. Um, I, I think some people are skeptical, skeptical. Some people are, are full on fans and a lot of legends have come out and supported me and shown me so much love. And to me, that's the most important, right? If the gatekeepers of this sport, which are the fighters, you know, without, without the fighters, this wouldn't be a sport. So all the legends, Vander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Jr. All of them have shown me massive and massive amounts of love and support. Oscar De La Hoya, like the list goes on when you really start to dig it all up. Um, and so that matters to me the most. Um, and I know, I know what I'm doing. I'm help, helping women's boxing, you know, have my, my charity, my foundation, Boxing Bullies, which is getting young kids involved in the sport. Um, and so all I've done is try to add to this sport, change it forever. And I'm just starting, you know, it's only been two and a half years. Um, so I have big plans and, and a lot more to come. I take boxing more seriously than anyone in the world. Um, and, and I would, I would go to, go to my grave with that. Um, all of these guys, you know, they've been boxing their whole life. I have to play catch up, you know, in the, the whole world, a lot of the boxing people want to see me lose. There's a lot more at stake for me. Um, and so I know I'm playing catch up and because of that, I have to take it more seriously from everything from meditation, manifestation, yoga, stretching, the sparring, recovery, ice baths, you know, all, all of these things that I know a lot of boxers don't even know about or, or do or practice. Um, and so, you know, it's my life 24 seven. I, I, I have invested everything into this. I, I moved locations to Puerto Rico just to be by myself in isolation, just to train. Um, you don't see a lot of people doing that. They do it for camps, but they don't do it for their whole entire life. Um, so I take it, I take it very, very seriously. Uh, and I take my life very seriously. And my life is on the line when I get into the ring. And I know that, and I have to do everything I can to protect myself. So is boxing you know, has boxing kind of changed you as in your direct participation in the sport? Has it changed you maybe in a way that you weren't necessarily expecting when you first when you first got involved with it? For sure. For sure. It's changed me for the better. It's helped me mature. It's helped me find out who I truly am. Um, it's, you know, kept me disciplined and on a routine. Um, and I've fallen in love with it. And it's now my passion. And, you know, you need passion in life and you need progress in life without those two things humans uh, go insane um, and so it's changed my life and given me something to work towards um, and, and a goal and I, I feel like I'm found truly found my calling now I wanted to ask your view on on the boxing business in the sense that you get criticized for sort of being fast tracked or jumping the queue headlining on big networks but would you say to the boxing world well if that's a problem for you why especially in men's boxing are we not getting the big super fights that would be headlining on big network shows if boxing was running had its own house in order then it wouldn't have to be criticizing outcomers uh, outsiders coming in and showing a different way of doing things yeah no exactly i i think people are mad at themselves actually they're not mad at me. They're taking it out on me because they're mad at themselves. Uh, I'm my own promoter. I do all my own. I'm not signed into any some cr any crazy deals. Um, I do what I want, where I want, with each fight, and that freedom is is uh, is amazing. And I want to be the model to show other fighters how to do that. But then they just get mad at me for that. So it's like this weird thing. Like, yo, you should just be doing what I'm doing. Uh, you know, work, do social media. People are mad. Oh, I fast tracked to the top. No, no, I didn't. I, I filmed videos for five years straight, growing my brand, growing my business, growing my own promotion, growing my TikTok. These fighters don't even have TikTok. They don't even know what that is. So it's like, you're mad at me, but really I've been working harder than you for longer. And people forget that I'm an athlete. They think I just picked up some gloves and, and started doing this. No, I was all state wrestler division one in the hardest wrestling state in the United States, Ohio. Um, you know, and I was up early 
jogging before school, staying late after practice to lift. So I've, I've been putting in the work. I got voted hardest worker on my wrestling team. So um, this isn't just a, an overnight thing. And I've earned my spot in every single place in my life. I'm from Ohio where everything is earned and nothing is given.